Hey everybody, my name is Chris Burns, back with another art video. Today I will be doing a tutorial on how I color clothes for my manga illustrations and anime illustrations. And today I will be coloring this character named Tasha. She is part of the Kazador Corporation, which makes their first appearance in book 3 of Chikara Power of God, which is coming soon. I'm super excited. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Alright, so I have my picture sketched up, then I inked it, and I printed it off, and it's getting ready now to be colored. And I'm going to do a full color illustration video later on, probably tonight or tomorrow, so you guys can see from beginning to end how I color, obviously, the clothes, the hair, the skin, shoe design, all of that stuff. But today we're just focusing on her hoodie. So I have my colors for her hoodie all mapped out right here. Her hoodie is based, uh, um, based off of a lot of oranges, and it has some uh, blue hints for where her, um, I guess that's the cuffs, the cuffs of the of the are this uh, cuffs of the sleeves i'm not i'm not sure how to actually really say that but i have the blues for that i have the oranges for the hoodie and uh obviously i have my paper over here my trusty paper to see what colors i need to use first as a base color and um let's go ahead and get into it so i have uh last time i did a tutorial it was on over here and i said i wanted to put the what i was using on the screen like i was going to throw it up on the screen but i uh, for some reason forgot to do that in post-production so i apologize for those that are watching or that were watching that video and were like, oh, I don't know what he's using. Um, I said them, and I also showed them on the screen and stuff, like with the camera and everything. But this time, I'll make sure to put all of the the pins and the numbers in the description this time, so that way they're just there. I don't have to worry about post and forgetting. They're just in the description, so you guys can check out the brands that I use and also the numbers for if you want these colors for projects of your of your own. So for her hoodie, I need a base color. I need a base orange. That's like, I need a light color orange. I have this color orange, but I don't think I'll actually use this one. I, I just put it over here just in case. Um, I need a, 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 let's see, I need a base color. So this is a PM15. This is a PM69. I'm probably gonna go with the 15 first, just to get down a base color orange here. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it. I, I, I use Prismacolor. Like if uh, we talked a little bit last video about, um, what brands I use and stuff. I use a mixture of, of several different brands. Uh, Artist Loft, Prismacolor, Copic, um, and there's some other ones in there. I ordered a, a set of 225 uh, markers off of Amazon, which I think they're, the brand is called Art Marker. I could be wrong. So I'm pretty excited to get that. That comes like next week. It's gonna be, I'm gonna have so many colors and I'm so excited because now I don't have to worry about not having a particular blue or you know all that stuff. I'll have the whole spectrum. So, when coloring clothes, since this is a tutorial, <laughs> when this, when coloring clothes, how I like to do is, I obviously, obviously, I like to set down a base color for the clothes. And this is definitely different from hair, because when I was drawing the hair, it was setting down a base color, but I was going with the hair strokes, because that was a big picture. For this picture, I definitely won't be doing really long brush strokes for it. It will most likely be filling it in with little circles, because it's a smaller, you know, surface area to work with. But we're going to use a similar circular motion just to lay down some base color here. Let me make sure this is the orange I want. Um, yeah, this is definitely. You start down laying uh, some base color on the hoodie. A lot of people have asked me, you know, like, what's the best brand marker to buy? You know, what should I, I'm a beginner. What should I use? Um, honestly, I, and you'll probably hear this a lot with a lot of artists. It's, like it's down to personal preference. I know some people are diehard Copic users. Like they only use Copic markers. Like they don't want to use anything else. But I found that literally like, um, I like all of them. Like I haven't found, there's nothing like with Copic where I'm just like Copic's better than all these other brands. They literally are the same type of marker. They use alcohol instead of water. Um, it's just, you know, Copic has the brush, uh, tip on it which makes it a little bit more convenient to do things like I'm doing now instead of using like a chiseled nib or a small nib to try to do it. Um, but I found that I actually like using this type of nib on smaller areas than using the brush because I feel like I have a little bit more control. And that's where it comes down to that personal preference that I was talking about. Because, um, you know, some people can, you know, cover a large area with ink pretty fast and pretty accurately. I have to, I have to take my time um, to make sure I don't, you know, go over any lines or miss anything like that. So I just lay down a base color like this. And then for obviously like for uh, this area, like for her, for um, I guess they're called drawstrings, hoodie strings. I don't actually know what to call them because I never had to call them by a name before. It's just, I just use them. <laughs> but we're gonna, we're gonna color those real quick. Um, and I actually probably could have colored those blue, but you know, we'll keep them orange. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through with obviously like the bigger, the bigger nib here, I guess that's the way to say it. And, and get really these, these bigger areas. Um, 
and I apologize also in advance for how I'm holding my markers and my pins and stuff I definitely hold them differently than most people so like most people would hold here maybe like that I I, I write like a lefty and color weird so I apologize if you can't see the picture while I'm coloring it um, but you'll, you'll see I guess the the after uh, math <laughs> the aftermath of what I'm doing here and with clothes I like to work in sections I like to kind of see what sections I can work with to they give it the most even coat of uh, ink as possible so you don't have like a lot of bad trouble areas so like like I'll start up here with the sleeve and then I'll come up here um, and kind of make my own little section color this area of the sleeve just so everything looks as uniformed as possible because um, traditionally you can get away with it if you kind of mess up on an area or some area doesn't have a, not, a lot of ink on it if someone's just looking at this picture just out of you know they're looking at it they're not going to see the mistake but since I scan my stuff in my scanner picks up where there's not a lot of ink so like if there's not a lot of ink in one spot it's going to be a lot lighter or sometimes even white um, if I'm not too careful and uh, it'll really I'll have to just correct it in post I know how but for the average person they don't know how and it, to them the, the picture will look ruined um, I think at some point I, I've done a digital tutorial before on how I edit stuff uh, but I might go and I might do a more in-depth version at some point on like how I edit digitally and you know correct things but now we can work on the the bigger area here and this area I can kind of get a little bit more free with I can or I can really open up this this uh, this nib here and, and cover as much space as I can. This is a semi uh, semi big picture. I wouldn't say it's like massive, um, but it definitely is a large area to cover with uh, with your ink. So you just want to be you want to be quick, but you don't want to rush. And I know that sounds weird, but you want to cover as much as you can before the ink starts to dry that way you don't see like any weird uh extra lines for coloring and i know this might sound weird but you, you'll see it here in a minute on this right side um like that you'll get you'll, you'll like my scanner will pick up that but luckily this is like i said is just a base color so i'm gonna go in and add some shadows and stuff too so to help even all of this out but for the most part like this looks uh this looks pretty good and I, and I might even go over like I'll see the, my trouble spots and I'll go over with some some more ink to try to you know cover up as much as I can so my printer doesn't have to die trying to cover it up as well and we will be coming back to this color so I'm not just like throwing this one out we're, we're done I, I will be coming back to that color so now that we have our base color down now we can go in with a more darker color to start working on our shadows and like I said, when I normally do digital and traditional, I have a three color process. Some people have like a lot, like I use, I try to stick to like three shades. So I'll have a base, a shadow and a darker shadow. I try not to go over that just because it doesn't really fit with my style. But I know some people obviously, the more colors you have, the more you can go into depth on shadows and really making it pop and depth and all that stuff. So this one right here is actually a PM16. It's only one number above this one. So I'm not gonna use this one for shadows because it, it's virtually, it's not gonna matter. Um, because it's like it's literally one number above it um uh, i'm uh i i guess i guess i could just for the sake of the video let me let me check out this one this one's uh made by artist loft this one's a yr4 let me see how this one compares to that one yeah this is definitely a darker uh a darker orange this will be our dark shade um or that one will be our dark shade i have to i have to see um so yeah we'll, we'll use this one for the sake of the tutorial the pm16 which is just one number above that one and since our lighting is going right at here, I'm not worrying about like a, a casting shadow or like, you know, there's dark over here and right there. It's um, the light is going right at her. So the shadows are going to be pretty simple. There's going to be a, definitely a shadow under the hoodie area here. Be a shadow under these, the, the draw hoodie strings, whatever we're calling them. Add a shadow on top. And since this number is literally right above the other one, this one's pretty much just gonna help me. It's gonna guide me for uh, my other, the darker orange, I should say. Oh, this is shadows back here. Got a little shadow here. Very basic, very basic my um, shading and stuff is. I don't know why I said it that way, <laughs> but I did. <laughs> 
studied a lot. Like I said in my last uh, tutorial, I studied a lot of Kishimoto. And even though his stuff really has a lot of dimension, um, it's just because he has a lot of colors he can work with. I, I, I don't have the luxury of having all of those colors just yet. But Wednesday, it's a different story. I just might. I just might have a lot of colors to work with. can really start making my backgrounds really pop more. But I've studied a lot of his work over a lot of years trying to figure out how, how he colors and makes his stuff, you know, the Naruto look. In post, I'm actually going to add the picture of the Cazador Corp that I drew, um, what was it, last month? A month ago. I'm going to add it in the middle of her hoodie like she's wearing the brand. She's wearing the Shikara brand. I think that's going to look pretty cool. Add a little shadow here to the pocket. Same on that side. And that's uh, that's it for the the rough shadows. We still gotta add uh, still gotta add some more. Um, and that's where I'm gonna use this one for another darker shadow. And then if this one looks good with that combination, I might even go four this time, which is very rare for me. Um, and I still have uh, I have these over here, which these aren't really orange. These are more of a a, a red shade. But um, if necessary, I might even use uh, one of these on the back here, just to just to see, to see how that how that works out. But we're gonna use this one. This one's the uh, YR4 by Artist Loft. Really get back here on uh, some of these shadows. Really push, push our, uh, our our art here. And as you can see, I'm not really uh going. I'm not copying what I did here. I'm adding to it, if that makes sense. So I'm adding some dark here. Um, where I might, where I, where I see that there might need to be some shadows. Um, so like right here under like the hoodie, there might be one. Um, definitely maybe on this side. Definitely got to add some on the creases here. And I'm just adding to what we already have. I'm building up those layers, that dimension. Where it needs to be. Because you don't want to overdo it. You just want to make it just enough. Just enough to where it's noticeable, but not overpowering the picture. And with these oranges, you can use these obviously for your characters. You can use these oranges for Dragon Ball Z um, or like Goku or something. So, you know, we got some more shadows and stuff going on like that. And like I said, I want to see if this one, I'm going to test it over here and see if it'll work as even a darker shadow or if it'll just, it'll clash with it. Because I, or you're, actually I can use a, you know what, I'm not going to use this one. I want it to, but it's kind of more of a yellow rather than an orange. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, uh, this is like a, it's called light rouge um, or light, is it light rouge? Light rouge. Okay. And I'm going to take this one, light, light rouge. This is a R14 Copic. I'm gonna go through just on the back here, right where those, uh, right where her her neck goes on the um, back of the hoodie. I can push this even more. I can even darken it up. This is a R17. This is like lipstick orange, so I can really darken this area up back here and really push push those colors. Um, and now how the how the shading looks right now, you can definitely see the lines from the colors and all that stuff. If I wanted to blend some of these colors, I would obviously I would take this color and I would take this color and blend together, which is what I normally do. So I'll take this color and I'll just kind of lightly go over that that darker color that we used before, just to kind of soften the soften them out a little bit, so it's not just an abrupt line there, only where need be. Like I said, like I don't want to I don't want to take away from that effect because that's my style um, but for, the, for this one kind of go down on that area kind of look around see see what might need to be pushed out a little bit and I definitely want to give a, uh, a darker shadow actually I want to use the darker one here just to show that there's some shadows there maybe even bring those down just like that and I definitely want to bring shadow out here and one out right there and just like that 
like I said, my my uh, my coloring stuff is very very simple. Um, I don't do a lot of gradients and like that kind of stuff with my with my Copics. At least not right now, because um, in the story it's not really too necessary um, to go that crazy with like my colors and stuff on a background. Like I said, once I get my new markers, I I might actually experiment and try to really push like a a design or something and see like how far I can really go with it. Cause like uh, normally like if I want to do like a from a dark to light uh, gradient on this, obviously you would get your darker marker and you would go um row about halfway darker down here and then it builds up light and then you blend it with this one. Uh, so for example, and I would normally do that digitally um, because it's just easier to put a layer over here and do it digitally. Um, I don't really want to mess up what I've already done because this is I, I, for uh, for sake of tutorial purposes, I'll do it on this um I'll do it on this scratch piece of paper right here just so you can see what I mean. So I know there's a lot of colors on here. I've been using this for for quite a while. But let's say this is our base color, right? We have that base orange. Let's slide over just a little bit. And let's say we even got you know the dark orange up here, and then let's say it gets darker. About right there, something like that. You take your original uh, foundation color and you go over that area with it. And then you take your second color and you go over that area with it. And you can see that it, it causes that dark to light gradient that you can transfer over to her jacket if you want to, or any any character, not just her jacket, but any character. You could start up here. You, this, this whole thing could be this dark orange right up here on her hoodie. And then gradually it gets lighter as it comes down if you're very you know if i was doing i if i was going to do that style from your phrase if i was going to do that style i would have started out doing that first before adding the, the shadows and shades so just a tip if you guys wanted to do that technique now you know how to do it um you can throw that in with any other character you want and stuff but like i said my coloring is really simple for her jacket it's this is this is all i would do um traditionally i would oh i'm i'm dumb we still got to do the cuffs for her sleeves for the main part of her jacket this is what i would do so for the customer sleeves, she has a, a, a orange and blue color palette. Um, I use PB48. Um, this one's a Prismacolor brush series. So this one actually is, it helps me out a little bit more. And um, we're just going to go in and lay our foundation color here. And I don't have an, a really another darker shade of this blue, which I wish I did. Um, I hope they give me in that new marker set. Because um, like I said, normally I do this stuff digitally. Is Because uh, uh, the shadows for this could it, could it could be so good if i just had just a shade darker than this blue but we're just gonna go on our uh, little areas here that we left white get our foundation color going this whole uh section is blue as well i normally turn the paper just to to help out with how I color, but for the sake of you guys, I don't want you guys being confused. Like, oh my gosh, like he's coloring sideways. I'll color uh, straight across. I do have a blue that might work as a shade. I have to check real quick and see if it does. Let me handy dandy test paper over here and see if this is a darker blue than this one that we're using. Or if it's a lighter blue, and it's actually a lighter blue. So we're going to look up here and see if I can find something just a little bit darker. Because I don't want to overpower that blue. This might work. This looks like a purple, but it's really not. This is the original's PB48. This is like PM144. They really have no relation to each other. Uh, but it I thought it was a purple, but it, it looks it, it works as a shadow for this. So there's that at our shadows from the hoodie here. Got a shadow for the lip of the uh, the pocket. I'm on this side. Got a shadow from here. And then these, I'm just going up on the lines I made. It's a little shadow, um, not a crazy amount, uh, and it works. But like I said, I'll add more digitally since I can't find the actual number. Is this the same marker? This is 145. Let's try 145. 145 is definitely a little bit darker.
All right, we're gonna use 145. The 144, for some reason, uh, looks like it blended in with that blue instead of standing out. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Oh yeah, this is much better. I don't know why I didn't do this before. And roughly that's uh that's it for her jacket at least. I still have to do obviously her hair and her legs and her shoes and stuff. Uh, luckily though, she is a white dog person. Uh, dogmen, the official race of their peoples, and her skin's white, so I only have to worry about like the grays and stuff. I don't have to worry about actually coloring her skin or anything like that. So let me zoom out here just a little bit so you guys can see it. Um, and that's how I draw my um, clothes for my manga and my illustrations and anything that I'm dealing with traditionally. Uh, the same rules still apply digitally. I do the same thing, set a foundation color, and then build up my shades from there. Uh, but for the most part, traditionally, this is how I do things. So that's going to be it for the video. Um, I appreciate everybody that's come to watch. I hope you guys uh, picked up some tips and <laughs> you can apply them to your work and, you know, watch somebody else's videos and build your, your art from there and just kind of pick and pull and see what works for you and what doesn't work for you. This style might be too simple for some people. Um, so, you know, people like might, uh, they might want to do more detailed stuff than this. So my style doesn't work for everybody and it's not, you know, the best out there. So definitely go explore, look at other people's channels, see what works for you. Like I said, pull from different artists and figure out your style like that. So I'm going to go ahead and shut the video down here now. Um, I appreciate everybody, like I said, that came out to watch. If you have any questions, don't f uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, I put all the descriptions for the markers in the video. My links are out there if you want to go check out my paperbacks and ebooks for Chikara, as well as my Instagram if you want to just stay in touch and see what's going on in my world as a manga artist and a graphic designer. So feel free to come drop a follow and make sure to like and subscribe this video and share it to all of your art friends and beginner art friends that are trying to figure this out as well. So I hope you guys have a good rest of the week or day or however wherever you're watching this, whenever you're watching this, and I will see you guys for the next art tutorial.